Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different and give you a review of this number 62 low angle jack plane and explain why it's the most versatile hand plane that I own. So stick around and we'll get started. I've been using this hand plane now for about two months and I'm extremely happy with the performance of it. This is a number 62 low angle jack plane. It's made by Lee Nielsen, but there are other manufacturers that make excellent versions of this plane as well. What's really important is the 12 degree bed angle that these planes have and the bevel up iron that they use. Uh, that bevel up iron allows you to uh, change the angle of attack uh, relatively quickly and, and do different tasks with it pretty easily. Uh, it is quite a bit different different than a standard Bailey pattern plane uh, in the fact that it has that bevel up and, um, and these standard style be uh, Bailey planes are beveled down and they're bedded around 45 degrees and it's, uh, you can't really change that. So you can sharpen that ang iron at any angle you want and you're still going to get 45 degree angle of attack on the board that you're working on um, due to bevel down. Uh, these are extremely versatile tools these low angle jack planes and they can do a lot of different tasks really really well and uh, if you were only going to have one hand plane to do multiple different things this would be the one that I would get for sure. Uh, it's it's easy to set up, it's easy to um, change it for different tasks uh, and, and it's just a pleasure to use. So uh, a couple of the key features to it Again, is the, the low bed angle set at 12 degrees and the um, bevel up plain iron. The, the irons are pretty thick, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, whereas even aftermarket irons that you get for a um, Stanley style normal plane, bevel down plane, are around the eighth inch thick. So quite a bit thicker. It's supposed to reduce terra, or, uh, chatter, rather. I, although I've never really had a problem with chatter in, in the hand planes that I use. Um, but uh, it is adds some weight to it and makes this a lot nicer to use. Uh, it has an adjustable mouth or adjustable toe, so you can open and close close the mouth of the 62 uh, depending on what type of work you're doing with it and, and that's a nice feature and it's a lot quicker to adjust the mouth than it is to do on a standard style plane. I got mine with two irons. Uh, both of them were 25 degree factory ground irons and the first one I didn't do anything with and I just use it exactly the way it came. There's no camber on it uh, and it's at, stays at that 25 degrees plus the 12 degree bed angle give me a 30 37 degree angle of attack and what that's good for is cutting end grain so if I'm fitting a door that I've made into a case and the door has end grain on the top and the bottom I'll use this plane to trim the top and the bottoms of the door so that I can get a really good fit into the case and it leaves me a really glassy smooth finish it's easy to cut into the end grain with this and uh, and it doesn't have a lot of tear out so it's really good for that and this also makes it great for a shooting plane in this configuration. Um, again, it slices through that end grain really easily uh, and, and you get excellent results using this as a shooting plane. Uh, Lee Nielsen even makes a small attachment handle that goes on the side. I think they call it the hot dog and it's basically just a handle to help you push it through when it's laying on its side and you're using it as a um, shooting plane. But even without that, this it works really, really well and it cuts through that end grain really nice. Um, so when I'm not using this as a end like shooting plane or working on end grain. The other great thing it's, it can be used for is working on figured grain. So if I have to hand plane some tiger maple, which has been the case these last couple of weeks on a project I'm working on, um, I have another iron that also came at 25 degrees and then I made a steeper micro bevel at, um, to to get me a 43 degree angle on this iron. And so that 43 degrees with the 12 degree bed angle uh, gives me an angle of attack of around 55 degrees and that's great for working on figured wood. Um, that high angle of attack combined with the ability to open and close the mouth of this plane uh, makes it give you almost tear out free results or absolute tear out free results on the last couple of boards I used it on. Um, you can set that plain iron in and then tighten that mouth up real good and I can plane against the grain or with the grain either way and get tear out free results. So um, you, you don't need to have a jack plane or a low angle jack plane rather to get tear out free results. Uh, my plane of choice before having that for figured grain was this number four that I have, old Stanley number four. and. Um, 
I adjusted the frog real close up to the front of the mouth um, to get a real fine shaving and a real small opening. And, and this plane works excellent for, for figured wood and taking a real thin, nice, even shaving. Um, but if I want to do anything else with this, if I wanted to take a heavier cut with it and I tried to deepen the uh, iron into it and uh, take a pass, I clog up this plane really easily. So it's really good for working on figure grain, but not great for working on anything else. Um, and if I want to adjust that, I have to loosen the frog and pull everything back. And it takes about 10 minutes of fiddling for me to get it working right um, to do another task. So, so this ends up being a purpose set plane and I don't do anything with it. And the same goes with my, the jack plane I was using a lot before I got the low angle one is this um, number 605 Stanley Bedrock and it has a very open mouth on it and a very cambered blade and I can take heavy shavings if I'm um, flattening a board at the beginning of a project. But if I try to do anything else with this plane, again, it takes 10 minutes of fiddling with the um, frog to get it right and, and adjusting the iron the way I want it. And so I just keep this set up for um, just taking heavy shavings at the beginning of a project. And so because of that, you end up, this is why people end up with a, a row full of hand planes of the Bailey pattern style ones and each one does a certain task um, really well but it doesn't do a lot of the other things well. With the number 62 or any of the low angle planes you have that versatility of just quickly changing out an iron and being able to do a bunch of different tasks so it makes it really nice. They make a couple other irons as well that you can get. One is a 90 degree iron it's just basically the front of the where the where the edge is is lopped off and when you put that in a 12 degree bed angle you this will act as a scraping plane and so if you have some super difficult woods this, that uh, scraping iron would be really good and you can get tear out free results with that too. Uh, there's a tooth iron which is uh, just has serrations on the bottom of the iron and that allows you to take heavy shavings and figured wood and get a reduced amount of tear out so if you're using this as a true jack plane and um, thickness in a board down or trying to flatten a board and it was figure grain you could open the mouth up, uh, use the toothed iron, take a heavy shaving, and get a lot of reduced tear out. Probably not tear out free, but pretty close. And, and that just helps you when you get to the final stages of smoothing and scraping. You won't have to do as much of it because you didn't have a lot of tear out in the beginning. Um, those are a couple of the advantages of this hand plane. Uh, one disadvantage to it is that it uh, takes a little getting used to the way you have to set and adjust the iron. I am used to the Bailey pattern planes with a depth adjuster and lateral adjuster. So while I'm getting into the cut and just starting on a board, I can slowly increase the depth of the iron on a Bailey pattern plane until I start getting the shaving and if the shavings coming off one side or the other and it's not centered I can adjust the lateral adjustment while in the cut with just one finger to set every to get a nice shaving out the middle of the iron on a number 62 you can't do that um, has a small depth adjustment wheel and it's hard if not impossible to try to adjust while you're in the cut so in order to get around that you have to set the iron in and kind of get it lined up visually and then I take a piece of scrap and I run it a shaving on the left side of the iron and the right side of the iron and then I look for the thickness of each shaving and if they're not consistent it's heavier on one side than the other then you have to take a mallet and tap one side or tap the other until you get the iron centered up and then you do a couple more passes with the scrap board until the shavings are even on each side uh, and then you can tighten everything down and you're good to go but you do that off of the board, it takes a little bit more time, about a minute or two, and uh, compared to the couple seconds that it takes on a regular Bailey style plane. So it's taken me a little while to get used to that part, it's a little slower, but the trade-off is extreme versatility and I'm, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it to be able to do so many different things with one tool. Um, other than that, I think that's really the only disadvantage to this. It feels easier for whatever reasons to push this plane through um, a board when you're working on it, even with the higher angle iron sitting in there. Uh, but yeah, this is a, an excellent tool. I did get a chance to try out the Veritas version of this tool and the Wood River version of the tool. And the Veritas version has uh, an adjustment knob at the front, or a stop actually at the front, so that you don't over adjust the toe 
and run it into the iron that you may have just sharpened. And it also has a set screw on either side of the plane body that once you get the iron set where you want it, you can run the set screws in until they're touching each side of the blade. And then um, when you're using it and you got to pull it out to sharpen the iron, you can put it, when you put the iron back in, it falls between those two set screws you've already adjusted and it centers the iron back up and then you have very minimal amount of fiddling um, to get everything set back up. So those are pretty nice features. Um, the number 62 Wood River that I tried was a friend of mine's and he um, had already had it set up. He he said he had to do a little bit of filing to the edges and worked on the blade for 15-20 minutes to get it nice. But by the time I got a hold of it and used it, it took every bit of good of shaving as the Lee Nielsen did. Um, the, I bought the Lee Nielsen one um, because the fit and finish on these tools are so perfect. I own a couple other of their tools and they're just nice right out of the box and you don't have to do anything with them. So I I just decided to go this route. The difference in price between the Wood River and the Lee Nielsen wasn't uh, was only 40 bucks I think and it just wasn't worth it to for or was worth it for me to get the Lee Nielsen. Um, if I had to do it over again I might consider the Veritas one because of the extra features, but I'm pretty happy with my decision. Um, I definitely, I wouldn't be upset if I had the uh, Wood River version. It, it does all the same things this plane does. It's a great tool, and I, so I'd love to have that one too. So in general, the bevel up um, planes like these are just really nice to use, really versatile, and they can do a lot of different things. So. Anyways, that's my review of this hand plane. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, it's kind of new for me, so if uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section whether you like the review or I should just keep building projects and not talk. Uh, either way, let me know. Uh, if you did like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.